today's ultra relaxing pansy watercolor tutorial. We are going to dive into the world of a loose watercolor and create something gorgeous like this. We are going to take this tiny bouquet that I picked from the garden and take it loosely as our inspiration. And with that, we are going to start mixing some purples. Yours may be different from mine. So the thing that you should really pay attention to is that if you're trying to mix a purple, you want to mix a cool red and a warm blue. So that's really gonna get you that vibrant purple rather than a muddy color. So you can use exactly what I used, which is for the reds, quinacridone red and permanent carmine. And for my blues, French ultramarine and something in a mislabeled pen, something like sky blue. And that ended up creating these very rich, deep purples. I also added a little bit of wisteria, as you see here on the right, to brighten things up a tiny bit. Now let's add some water to our color just so that we have different opacity, really saturated colors and light washes. Do the same with your yellow, just straight out of the pan. I happen to be using cadmium free yellow. Taking the light wash of that color, I'm using a small 000 brush and laying down the foundation of where I want the middle of some of the pansies to be. We are going to be pretty loose with this painting, so as long as you have some kind of yellow blob shape there for three flowers or more, you are good to go. And with that, you can move on to one of the light purples that you have mixed. Don't start with too saturated a color. And what we're going to do is use the side and the belly of the brush. So watch here as I kind of drag it and push it down sideways and lift up at the end to use only the tip to make fine little points here and there. Much of this is going to be covered in later stages, so don't worry about getting this right perfectly. Just stay in the flow. This is a warm-up exercise. The goal is to have fun and get into the zone. What I want to tell you about the pansies, by the way, if you are painting them differently from mine. So they have five petals and it's quite unusual because they have four at the top that are in two rows, two and two behind that, and then at the bottom is one large petal. So it's quite an unusual shape, but it is simple to paint. If you want the practice of repetition, of course you can do all your pansies in this tiny little bouquet in the same direction. But I think it's fun and it also stretches you a bit to create these pansies from different directions. So one like this, staring at you right from the front, one that I'm going to paint here for you on the side. It's a little trickier, but if you want, you can follow along here, brush stroke by brush stroke. And I think it's a really good exercise to kind of force you to think of how these five petals would be arranged. And of course, you can look at reference images too. No shame in doing that to understand the anatomy of the flower. I've switched to yellow now. I hope you're following along. We are going to paint the easiest buttercup flowers you will ever paint. It is just a few curved brush strokes with some white space in between and you're done. Now let us pick up some really light purple wash and go back over the inside of the petals that we have painted so far. So we've done the perimeter and now we are going to cover some of the inside. I think it's really fun. Go back and kind of mix between the different purples that you have all across the flowers. So just keep going back and changing slightly the exact color that you're using, the exact mix, how intensely you're using the color and how much water you're using at any given point. So you can have a wash that is really, really barely any color and then some that are much more vibrant. And extra fun part, 
now that you gave yourself this neat little perimeter before, the neat little edge of the flower, now we're just going to go right over it. And I think it adds this really carefree kind of style that I'm enjoying in this practice session. Let's keep going with that step, going over some of the areas in the flowers that are still white, adding a little extra definition here or there, and really have fun with it. You can see some of these areas are still wet, so you're going to have that wet on wet effect, and just really let that color combination bloom let it do its thing in watercolor you're going to have different effects and it's all going to be a little serendipitous and it doesn't have to be exact so just enjoy the watercolor doing its thing now let's add a few tiny little flowers here i'm going to go with about four petals <laughs> they may be missing here or there and the way that I'm painting them is I'm using the tip of a size 6 brush. And then I am pressing down slightly to make that petal wider. And I am purposefully pointing them in a few different directions and not having every petal be the same. You want some imperfections in there. It's going to look just so much more fun and whimsical and natural. Here I am adding a few more washes. Join me, I know it can feel a little nerve wracking and kind of maybe going against the grain after you've painted your outlines, but it's going to look really beautiful in the end. If you like, join me here and add a little bit of oomph it's especially fun if the rest of the painting is still wet and you get those interesting effects again. And around the edges of the petals, I'm adding a tiny bit more, just little lines that follow the edges of the petals but aren't connected to them. And then I'm taking my cadmium free yellow and using a really, really, really intense version of it to go back over the tiny little yellow highlights that we had started with. Now it's starting to look much more reminiscent of a buttercup, isn't it? Of course, we're not going for realistic, but I just kind of like when it comes together a tiny bit more in this step. At this point, I'm using only the tip to create these really fine lines. Pushing down just a tiny bit to add some dimension. By the way, you can create the illusion of depth by going like I am here, almost parallel to the lines at the front, and then it'll look like you have petals in the back. Now comes the incredibly satisfying part that is going to pull this whole piece of artwork together. And that is adding black line work over the top. I started with the trickiest part, which is the pansy that is shown from the side here on the right. So feel free to again, just follow stroke by stroke to replicate that look. By the way, I'm using an Edding ink pen, pigment ink, Edding 1800 in a 0.1 size. And with that, let's continue. We are doing the petals here. Remember, four petals on the top in two rows, and then also one petal at the bottom. Notice how, at least in my version, I am purposefully not going exactly where I had painted before. So sometimes I'm going within on the inside of the paint, like I did with the pansy there in the middle for the four petals at the top. And then sometimes I am going outside of where I painted like I did with the bottom, the fifth petal in the middle pansy. And I'm also doing for these little details here at the bottom. And I feel like it adds 
I don't even know how to describe it, like a levity. I don't know. It's, it's just, it looks fun to me and so different from the tight, detailed, intricate style I am usually doing. So this was a really fun exercise for me. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments how you feel painting and drawing like this. Just keep going with the process. Remember five petals. Each of your flowers is going to be coming out at a slightly different angle, so the petals will be overlapping differently. And the beauty of this imperfect style is that it's fine if you make a mistake. In fact, I love that these lines are wobbly. I'm doing this on purpose. And also the watercolor paper is helping me because it has such a strong structure that it's almost impossible to do this perfectly straight line. And I find it just adds a sense of whimsy. Continue in this process. You can even decide if you prefer to not do it exactly like me and instead only add line work to certain flowers. I'm going to do it to all, but it's totally up to you. I've also decided because I think it adds lots of interest that I am going to add the stems and they're going to be only in the black line work and they're all going to be pointing towards the center, towards the bottom as they would in a bouquet, because that is that inspiration point from the garden that you saw at the beginning of the video. If you don't like that part, don't do it. It's totally your own approach. I also felt in my particular design here, the white spaces, I mean, white spaces in general are good and can be a design element, but sometimes they're not really working. And so I'm adding just a few leaves here, very simple ones. You do not have to do the exact shapes that I'm doing. I like that jagged edge from the tiny bouquet, but you can draw your leaves however you want. This is a stylistic interpretation and not accurate botanical drawing by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's also fun to add a few of those tiny little stripes that are so, so common for pansies because I feel like that just adds that extra little tidbit that really helps identify which flower we are trying to do here, even if it is such a loose painting. Keep going, and if there's any little corners, any little areas where you think, hey, this needs another leaf or another little something, you can even add flowers that you hadn't originally intended, just in black. Decide if you wanna go over your buttercups, totally a personal choice. I felt like it would tie things together make it a little more consistent. So I decided to do that here. I really hope you're having fun and you're in the flow and you are making decisions on the fly just like that as well. Here is our finished piece. Please check out this playlist if you enjoyed this and would like to do another painting. And let me know in the comments how it went. I'm so, so, so curious.